All right, what's up guys, this is Thomas, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your first ever travel video in three easy steps. Obviously, I'm not traveling right now, I'm in the beautiful London, so I'm gonna take you away to some epic locations. Let's cut to that, and then get started. I try to feel you. Step number one is you're gonna select your shots around the story. The biggest beginner mistake is you shoot everything aimlessly, pointlessly. You go around, you see cool thing, you shoot. You see cool thing, you shoot. You get shaky footage, you get bad angles, you get too many shots, you come back with five terabytes of footage that you're never gonna edit and it just sits there whilst you slowly weep the pain away that you're never gonna see the video that you wanted to make in the first place. That's not what we want. So instead, you're going to select your shots around the story. Think, what is the story? What is the video you want to make? What is the story you want to tell? So let's say you're going to Bali. Instead of just shooting a load of random shots of Bali, you're thinking, what is the story? Okay, where am I going? Right now I'm in a hostel and I'm going to go to an epic beach. Okay, that's the story. How I'm getting there and then when I arrive, that's probably like the climax, right? And then the ending might be a beautiful sunset with the beach, with the mission accomplished. That's your basic story. So get shots around that story. It tastes like charcoal has been blended. That's actually a good point. Taste of charcoal. We're both gonna die, mate. Let's try, try to blend it here. That's a good idea. So that's what you'd have in your mind. You've got your rough beginning, your rough middle, and your rough end. From there, you're gonna shoot each part of the story, and also importantly, the transitions between each part of the story, which leads me on to step number two. All right, step number two is that you're gonna shoot for flow. What I mean by this is that you are continuously thinking about where you are now and how you're going to arrive where you're going to arrive. I mean, both literally, like obviously you need to be thinking about this if you wanna travel, but the same way with your video. So a typical thing I see from the beginners inside my online courses is that they will create montages, which means it'll be like, here's a shot of us in the hostel, here's a shot of us on the beach, and then here's a shot of us with a drink, and I cut them together, and then it's, I wonder why I don't have a story, and I wonder why I don't have a cool travel video that engages people. So you've really got to think about the flow here. How do you get from place to place? How are you gonna take your viewers with you? How are you gonna create suspense and excitement about where you're going, about where your viewers are gonna come with you? So if you're doing this visually without any vlogging or talking to camera, then what you can do is just make sure you get those transition shots. You can even think about some cool transition effects such as whip pans or maybe covering the camera and revealing somewhere else. You can only do these things with a little bit of forethought. When I was in Bali a couple of years ago, we had to do this exact thing. We had to go from a hostel really early to get to a beach to actually catch it for sunrise. And I could have very easily got a shot of me waking up in the hostel and then the shot of us on the beach, but then I wouldn't have had a video. Instead, the whole story and the whole climactic moment was the effort to get to the beach, which actually turned out to be a nightmare. Me and George were driving around these motorcycles in the dark, not knowing where we were going, having no idea how to get there, asking locals, people who are up at 4 a.m. in the dark with their chickens on their farm, asking them where we needed to go in a completely different language. And when we actually got there, oh man, it was such a climactic, incredible moment because we felt like we'd achieved so much and been through all these adventures to get there. So really thinking about the flow of the video is what's gonna capture your viewers' attention and make sure they stick with you. Whether that's doing visual transitions, showing those journeys, or whether that's telling the story in a more vlog style. <sighs> All right, finally, step number three is to let your tracks, your songs, dictate the structure of your video. This is a mistake I always see. People just slap on a track and then that's it. They don't edit to the track. So this step kind of comes in layers. The typical advice you hear, which is great advice, is to cut to the beat of the music. It's a surefire way to make your more amateur looking videos seem more professional. However, a step further than this is to let your track dictate the structure of your video. So a song, a piece of music, has a beginning, has a middle, has an end. It has climactic moments, it has more downbeat, chill moments. So ideally, you're gonna to wanna to search for a track that will reflect the rough story that you have in your video. 
This is assuming that your video is shorter, by the way. This is assuming that you're working on maybe a three or four minute video. It's a whole nother topic if you're making a 20 minute, 30 minute vlog, that's for another video. But if we're talking about, okay, we wanna make a nice, short, punchy three or four minute video, then how are we gonna pick a track? Well, if your video has a chill morning where you're chilling out, getting a coffee, and then in the middle, you know something crazy happens or you go on this adventure and it's more kind of epic, and then at the end, it's chill again, you want to find a track that represents that. You want to find a track that has a chill beginning, builds up to a climactic moment, and then has a chill end. When you have that track, you then want to go and edit your video to each section. You have to be quite ruthless here. So let's say you, your morning shots, you have like five minutes of footage, or like 10 minutes, and the chill section of that track is like 45 seconds. You're going to have to cram those 10 minutes into 45 seconds and make some ruthless decisions taking out a lot of material to get the bare bones, the best stuff that just tells the story that just looks great to get into those 45 seconds. This, by the way, is how professionals make videos. Do not think that when I go out and make a travel video, every single shot is great and I just have unlimited options of shots. No, it's usually I'll get, you know, 20 minutes of footage for one scene and then I'll use 30 seconds of it or one minute of it. So it's rather than everything I shoot is amazing, it's picking the amazing bits from the footage and only putting them in the video. So once you do that to the chill section, and then you use your transition footage to transition as the music transitions to the more exciting, more adventurous section, and then the music might get more emotive, more emotional as you close off the video, maybe give some nice philosophical thoughts on your experience, or maybe let the visuals do the talking of the sunset or the sunrise, whatever it is, your video is gonna end along with the track. And that is really how you make an emotive video to a song that just works perfectly together. It's getting pretty chilly here in the park now. If you would like to get a list of gear that I use for all of my videos, a list of gear, if you're a beginner, what gear to use. If you are intermediate, which gear to use. If you're a professional, which gear to use. Then just download the gear list, which is in the description of this video. By getting that gear list, you'll also get a bunch of tips and tricks that are gonna be sent to you in the newsletter, as well as exclusive opportunities to join my online programs. All right, guys, until next time, see you in the next video. Keep filming, bye-bye.